often we measure two quantities, two characteristics associated with a particular item. And we want to see how these two features relate together. We might, for example, look at some students and compare their scores in maths and physics and see whether being good at maths uh, means that you're good at physics as well. Or we might look at months of the year and look at ice cream sales against the average temperature in that month and see how those two things relate together. And this idea of studying the relationship of two variables is called correlation, correlation. Let's have a look at a particular example. Suppose we try to run an advertising campaign. We have our spend on adverts and our sales. And let's assume it's all in thousands of pounds. So we run five different advertising campaigns. The first one we spend 2,000 and we get 60,000 pounds in sales subsequently. And then we spend 5,000 and get 100,000 pounds in sales. Four, six, three, and 70, 90, and 80. So we want to know how does the sales figures correlate with the spending? Is it true that the more we spend, the better the sales figures will be, which is obviously what we're hoping will be the case. And one way of getting a quick idea about whether this is true or not is to draw a scatter diagram. In other words, a diagram of one variable against the other. So we'd have a diagram like this. We'll put um, the advertising spend along here and the sales up here. The advertising spend in thousands of pounds goes up to a maximum of six. So we might have two, four, six here. And the sales goes from 60 up to 100. So we might have a jagged scale here, 60, 80, and 100. And so when we spend two, we get sales of 60. Five gives 100. Four gives 70. Six gives 90. And three gives 80. And that's a scatter diagram. And quickly, visually, we can see that there's a general trend. As you increase the spend, so you increase the sales, which is obviously what we want to achieve. And we say that these two variables are positively correlated. When one goes up, the other goes up. It's not perfect. There's an example here when we spent more on advertising, but the sales went down. Another one here. But there's a lot more examples where, as one went up, the other went up and the overall picture is clearly of an upward drift. So we have positive correlation. We might equally get negative correlation. For example, let's look at heating costs and temperature in months of the year. I won't go into exact figures, but we'll get the general effect that the higher the temperature, the less we spend on heating. So we might get a picture, something like this, over the 12 months of the year. Something like that, maybe. Again, it's not exact, but we can see that generally, the higher the temperature, the lower the heating cost. This is negative correlation. This was positive correlation. It's quite possible to get no correlation if you can think of two variables which really seem to have very little to do with each other, then you'd probably get just a, a blob of points. For example, if we plotted someone's salary against their shoe size, It's pretty unlikely that in a big population, shoe size will have any major effect on salary. And so we would get people with big shoe sizes earning low salaries or high salaries and vice versa. And people in the middle like that. 
And so we would say that those are not correlated. Zero correlation. Often when there is correlation, we can see why. We can see why spending more should produce, on advert, should produce more sales. We can see why a higher temperature should result in lower heating costs. Sometimes, though, things can be correlated without actual causation between one and the other. So, for example, if you took square miles of land and counted the number of mobile phone masts in each area and the number of shops there, you'd find a positive correlation. It's not because shops cause mobile phone masts or vice versa. It's because they both reflect increased population. In the middle of a wilderness, you wouldn't have any shops and you wouldn't have any mobile phone masts. In a very densely populated area, you'd have lots of both. So in that case, when there's correlation, it's because they're both based on a third factor, the population density in that case. So you always need to be careful not to assume that correlation implies causation. If you think it does, you should try to think of a specific mechanism, a link, as to why one should cause the other, as we've seen in these two examples. What we now need to go on to do is to find ways of measuring the degree of correlation in a precise way. And this can be done using correlation coefficients, which we will look at next. Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.